In this video, I'm going to explain a bit more on how to create and edit a few different kinds of figures within Quick Figures. After watching it, you should be very proficient with its features. This video assumes that you either watch the introductory video or have become a little bit familiar with Quick Figures in another way. In this particular figure, I have four channels shown, but if one channel does not need to be shown, you can right click on a panel, go to figure and exclude channel. And you can always put that same channel right back. CY5 is a fluorophore that is not visible to the human eye. In these images, we have it false colored in magenta. However, blue would contrast better with the red of the Texas Red channel. To change a channel's color, you just right click on an image panel, go to the channels menu, and go to recolor channel. I'll hit blue. That changes every channel panel, the merged panels, and the color of the channel label, keeping everything consistent. If you set a channel as excluded or change a particular channel's color, it will apply those changes to the next image that you add to the figure and the one after that and so on to keep everything consistent. You could also add rows or columns to your layout by dragging one of these handles. And if you want to add another image to this particular spot, you can simply take a file and drag it over and add that image file to your figure. If I click on a panel that has more than one channel, I can rearrange the order of the channels by simply clicking and dragging these handles that are on the right of the panel. There are a variety of other things that you can do with the channels to really create any kind of figure that you want. You can look at the user guide for more details. Sometimes you'll be creating figures with only a merged panel and not the split channel panels. Quick Figures is also extremely helpful with these kinds of figures. If you go to File, New, and Create Figure with Merged Only, you can create this little figure. You can click on the layout and add rows and columns the same way that you would if it were any other kind of figure. And you can easily add images to this figure by clicking and dragging files over to the panels where you want to put them. And it will uh, make the crop areas the same automatically making it very easy to build up these kinds of figures. Now, any kind of adjustment that you could do for your split channel figures, you can also do for these just as easily. You can swap channels around as well, and you can control which channels are visible. Sometimes you only want to crop some of the panels in a particular way. In this case, I'm going to select the panels in this row, all three of them, by holding Shift. And then I'm going to click the crop icon right here. And I'm going to adjust the height for the first one only. And then that will become the height for the next couple of images. And only those three images. So now I have a figure in which one particular row has a different height than any of the other rows. In most of these tutorial videos, I've been showing off how to rearrange your figure by clicking on the layout and using the handles on the layout to move panels around. And although that is a very convenient way to rearrange your figure, 
Each image panel is also an object that you can just click on and drag to an arbitrary location. If you've accidentally moved a panel to where you don't want it to be and want it back with the layout, you can just click on the center handle, drag it near the layout panel and let go. That makes the image panel aligned with the layout again. The center handles are also very convenient for other rearrangements. If I hold shift and select multiple panels, I can use that handle to move these panels around. I can also drag them on top of other panels to perform switches. So between the layout handles and the handles at the center of panels, rearranging your figure is very easy, very quick, and very convenient. Many of you will be working with images that have multiple optical sections or multiple time points, either instead of or in addition to having multiple channels. Quick Figures is also helpful with these types of images. If I go to File in my Object Tools toolbar New and create Figure with Merged Only, I can hit Default and it will ask me which optical sections I want. If these were time points, it would ask me about which time frames. If I type in 4 to 12 range and hit OK, it will generate a figure that has optical sections 4 through 12 inside of it. In the event that I want to change which optical sections are shown, I can right click, go to figure and recreate all panels. And that will open up the recreate panels dialog. Within this dialog, if I go to frames and slices, I can type in another set of instructions. For example, two by eight. I'm typing in so that it will give me eight different optical sections, taking an optical section every two slices. If I switch over to the Channels and Panels tab, I can use some of the other options to further modify this figure. I can change the scale factor such that the images are now bigger or I can ask it to squeeze these panels into three columns, or perhaps four columns is better. And every time that you make a change within this dialog, it will delete the old panels and create new ones according to your new instructions. I can also make this a split channel figure with a row for each optical section. I can also use the layouts to do other things to my figure. For example, if I right click and go to Edit Layout, Horizontal Vertical Flip allows me to change the orientation of my figure. The handles on your layouts provide several ways to rearrange your figures. You can look into the user guide for more details.